Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. And the focus of this afternoon is the Renault R28 from the 2008 Formula 1 season, driven by Fernando Alonso and Nelson Piquet Jr. Made by Norev. I think it's Norev, I think that's how you pronounce it. I shall have a quick look on the side, actually. Talk about bland packaging. <laughs> Does it say Norev on there? Oh yeah, on the underside. There we go. I think that's how you spell it, I don't know, it's made in France, or designed in France, there's probably a French pronunciation for that. Um, but do, I do apologise if I have pronounced it wrong. And also a lot of uh, foreign writing on the bottom there. Uh, yeah, made by Norev, although I probably pronounced that wrong again. Uh, and in a massively oversized box as well, it is a very chunky box. It is not uh, the standard box, I don't think, there are other versions I've seen and that come in a uh, bright yellow box but uh, maybe it's uh, just the one I picked up. I bought this at the Goodwood Festival of Speed as well. It was apparently damaged but uh, apart from a ding in the box I can't actually see any damage on the car. But uh, yeah, I have to say very bland packaging and uh, no description of the car on the, on the box itself apart from the uh, Renault, ING Renault F1 Team R28. But yeah, quick rundown of the car anyway. It's the uh, car from the 08 season, which of course Lewis Hamilton won. Fernando Alonso just jumped ship back from an, uh, from McLaren to Renault after a pretty dire, well I don't say dire season, but a pretty controversial season. Jumping back into the Renault, it, it wasn't the uh, the best car. It wasn't the same car he had back in 2005, 2006. Things, uh, things had changed, technology had changed. The Renault was no longer the force it was once before. But though he did score two wins in the later half of the season at the uh, was it Singapore Grand Prix where of course uh, PK deliberately crashed to help his teammate and then again at the Japanese Grand Prix. Uh, apart from that, uh, not a lot happened throughout the season. I think uh, Alonso was outclassed by, uh, well, I will say not outclassed, but uh, outscored by PK in the early half of the season. I think Fernando had a lot of trouble adjusting back to a life in the Renault team. Also adjusting to a uncompetitive car. Uh, not much else to say really. It's uh, not the best looking car. Also the livery is uh, quite topsy turvy. I can't see it very well because of the sun. There we go. That's better. The bright orange and the uh, white don't really go together on this car. I know it won a few fans, but uh, it doesn't hold a candle to the uh, blue livery it had pre in previous years. And also it's the I think it's the last uh, win for the Renault team as what it well, being called the Renault team. The next win would come in 2012 as the Lotus team. So it's pretty much the last time Renault won as a works team. Uh, but anyway, I should do a quick jump cut while I unpackage this thing because uh, it is a massively oversized box and I want to get inside. So uh, back in a moment. Okay, back again. Now the Renault, it is unpackaged glory. It's not a bad model. It's a first time model for the uh, Norev company, although pronunciation is probably wrong. Um, <laughs> it's uh, not a bad model this one it's uh, quite well sturdy it's very well detailed I mean it's at the absolute pinnacle of aerodynamics in Formula 1 with the uh, all these ridiculous sticky out bits on the car although that was a bit fragile there it's a bit wibbly but uh, overall it's not too bad there are a few issues with it you know, the, uh, the Bridgestone and the Potenza logos on the uh, front tyre well, all, all four tyres actually not all front ones the, the spacing between the lettering is a bit uh, bit big but uh, that's no big issue it's uh, it's clear it's bold and you can see it uh, it's not going to rub off either it's quite well detailed on there the tires are quite nicely uh, molded as well that's sort of uh, along the same lines as Mattel not with the uh, scrubbed appearance there like many champs have no driver in the car though there isn't actually a seat in the car either it's uh, it's a black hole with some painted on seat belts so it's just a a vast chasm in there, it's, there's no detailing in there at all apart from a little bit on the steering wheel but uh, you probably get a, a, a bit off market a small seat stick in there but it, it really does detract from the detailing of the car because the rest of it's fine nicely detailed model, the paint works uber as well, it's uh, it's, not, it's not smudgy, it's not chipping it's, uh, the, the uh, shark fin as well is metal as well, I shouldn't have done that <laughs> and this on most mini jet the model the shark fin tends to be plastic but on this it is pretty much metal and it's, there's no 
detail, uh, new decal peeling off either. Lots of detailing underneath with all the uh, flippy up bits. A few logos along the base there, along the floor. We've got the barge boards in there. And also we've got the uh, the bridge front wing as well. With the uh, three tier front wing. We've got the one tier, two tier, three tier, which is the uh, centre. Well, actually, it's not attached to the nose, but it's uh, the uh, the bridge wing. It's not attached to the nose, but it has does have the peg there, which supports it. And uh, also a couple of ears there. Wing mirrors are all attached as well, nicely done. And then around to the back as well. And it's uh, very nicely detailed on the back as well. You've got exhaust pipes, although there's not actually. Is there actually any exhaust pipes? In there? Oh, there are exhaust pipes in the uh, exhaust section there, although they're painted black so you can't really see them very well. You can't see them at all, they're actually not looking through the viewfinder very well there. But uh, yeah, detailing's not too bad. A nicely done diffuser on the underside. Not much to say on the bottom, apart from the. Uh, where are we? ING Renault F1 Team R28, 118 scale by Norev. Pronunciation may be wrong. And also, no keel on the car as well, no keel for the suspension. The suspension bolts directly to the, mono, uh, to the underside of the monocoque, so there's no keel at all. Getting to that era, era of Formula 1. Of course, with the V8 engines, the cars are now lighter at the back. And also, something to do with weight distribution. Smaller engines means less, no, less, no keel on the front. Something I read in the uh, somewhere on the uh, the net about that. Um, I think something McLaren pioneered. No, it's something was it Sauber pioneered it. Oh no, they came up with the twin keel, didn't they? Yeah, I think something McLaren came up with um, in 04 or 05, which eradicated the keel underneath the uh, nose section. But yeah, overall it's not a bad model. It's it's not really a rare model either, but you don't see them pop up on eBay very often. There, uh, I mean, I, I didn't, I couldn't find this one on eBay at the time anyway, because when I bought this at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I think it was uh, 2010. I bought this. Was it 2010? Must have been. I remember we bought three of them, and uh, my brother sold two of them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I kept kept hold of my one. Frantically, although the ones he did sell were damaged, they did have paint chips on the uh, top there. Um, no problem with mine here. Although that, there's a small flake there, although it's not peeling off. Uh, Decal-wise, they're not going to peel off either. I know when uh, Mini Champs released their 09 Renault, it was full of flaws with de uh, the decals peeling off, and the Noro version of the 09 car had no decal problems at all. And I will get on to the uh, 09 car at a later date as well. I don't have the Mini Chance version, but I do have the uh, Nora version. Pronunciation may be wrong. Um, yeah, it's not not a bad model. The only downside to it, or the big downside, is the colour scheme. I've never really got on with the ING colours. I prefer the Renault Blue, but uh, or the Mild 7 Blue, but uh, not a big issue there. I also like the profiling of this car, the low nose. really is an attractive piece of this car, such a slanted nose you can't really tell from that angle but uh, it really just sloped down a lot more than it did on the previous cars and uh, if I can get the right angle which I probably can't you'll be able to see how slow how low that nose is yeah, not too bad I've got to put some to a perspective of the 2014 noses which were all bloody diabolical apart from a couple of course I think the Williams pulled it off quite nicely in 2014 I'll get on, to, get on to that another day this is 2008 model and yeah I kind of wonder why uh, Mattel lost the, well, I don't know if Mattel lost the rights to the to the uh, Renault team but I think Mattel just focused mainly on Ferrari because after 07 they never made anything apart from Ferraris um, 07 was cut, I think uh, Mattel's last hurrah really uh, and we'll get on to other models in the range as well uh, but yeah we'll do the uh, 09 Renault as well from the Norov range and the 2010 Renault, uh, Renault as well which is the yellow and black model uh, that was quite rare as well actually I'll just get that down and show you it's in this box <laughs> just slot it in here push that one out the back and here's the 2010 car, I will get onto it at another date but it's uh, one of the rarer models it also has a silly plastic thing to cover the wheels and uh, why couldn't uh, Norav make 
the, the 08 car in a box like this. This box is fine. It's nicely sized and uh, doesn't detract from the uh, model at all because the, the 08 car is in a ridiculous box. I also like this box colour scheme as well. It goes with the car, yellow and black. And uh, I want to review that at a later date. It's just a shame any chaps didn't make a 2010 car. Although they did make a show car, but you know, show cars are a different thing altogether. I will get onto that as well, discussing the uh, what show cars actually are, if, if you ever had problems with uh, understanding that one. Basically, they're money spinners for people who can't wait for the current car. But uh, never mind on that one. Um, but yeah, this is the... Uh, We'll get on to the number as well. It is the Fernando Alonso version as well, although it does have PK's name written on the uh, top of the uh, roll, or not the roll hoop, but the uh, headrest at the back there. It does have both names listed there. I don't know if they actually made a Nelson PK Jr. version of this model. Um, I think they did for the 143 models, but I'm not sure they did for the 118s. Although it doesn't seem important though, because both names are on the box. Uh, both names are on the uh, car, sorry. Although it's Fernando Alonso's, num Fernando, Fernando Alonso's number on the front, number five. Uh, but uh, not, a lot, not a lot else I can say about it. Another issue I have found with this car, actually, I just noticed that there's no wheel discs on the rear wheels. Actually, and none on the front wheels either. I know throughout 2008 these ridiculous wheel rims covers were popping up all over the place and it really did detract from the look of the cars because I like to see glowing brake discs and the rims of the cars. I mean, Look at the 95 McLaren's wheels, they are proper wheels, whereas these, these are spoked wheels, but uh, I say spoked wheels, not the right, name, right, not right name for it is it, and also notice it's getting quite dark in here as well because the sun's just gone in which is a pain in the ass. but never mind. Um, I give this one about a 7.5 out of 10 because it is a very nice model, but uh, I wouldn't say it's a rare, well, I'd say it's rare to a Degree because they don't pop up on eBay very often, and of course, model stores in the UK are not going to uh, sell this model because there are pretty much no model stores or model shops in the UK anymore. Um, so, finding this one apart from it either on eBay or at events like the Goodwood Festival of Speed or a motor show, you're not going to find this model anywhere. You're not going to pay a huge amount of money for, money for it, or well, at least I didn't anyway. I paid about I think it's £25, I think, at the time I bought this model, but. Uh, they don't pop up very often, so it's, it's it's hard to tell how much you will pay for this car if you decide to buy one. I know uh, there are collectors for the 143 uh, uh, 143 scale models rather than 118s, and the 143 is far more uh, easily accessible because Mini Chance made them as well. But uh, only Norev for the 08 car, or for the 118 car, but uh, never mind. But uh, I'm rambling on, and I do apologise for that. But uh, if you do want to get hold of one of these, then I would suggest searching high and low for it because it is. They'll probably pop up. There'll probably be about ten pop up on eBay now that I've said that. But uh, um, it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, it's not made in high numbers. I don't think. I wouldn't say it's rare, but I don't know. Anyway. That's my rant about the thing. I've given you the highs and lows of this car. There's a few lows and a few highs. Mainly it's nice metal and flimsy plastic bits. As well as no driver in the car and no seat in the car either. But apart from that, I give it a thumbs up or a thumbs across. But uh, apart from that, stunning model. So uh, that's his, uh, my rant for the day. So I shall return later on for another review. Get that thing in view. And uh, I shall return later on for another one, so uh, bye for now.